Okay, everybody. Today we're going to look at the long run Phillips curve next to the long run aggregate supply curve. And we're going to look at some different scenarios here to identify the impact of one graph on another. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start off in long run equilibrium. I'm going to also start off in long run equilibrium on my Phillips curve model. And so here's our scenario. Our scenario is that the economy is experiencing a boom. So the economy is doing very well and the stock market is experiencing high gains and people have more money and so they're going to probably spend more money. And so what we're going to look at is the spending curve. So the spending curve on the long run aggregate supply aggregate demand model is the aggregate demand curve. Now if people are spending more money aggregate demand is going to shift to the right. As aggregate demand shifts to the right we see price level increase as well as output level increase temporarily. So how do we reflect this increase in aggregate demand and the conditions in the market on our Phillips curve model? Well, what I need to show is I need to show prices rising and output rising. And you may recall that there is an inverse relationship between GDP and unemployment. Therefore, if output is increasing, unemployment will decrease. So again, over here on my model, I need to show prices increasing and unemployment falling. So what I'm going to show is a sliding along the curve to the left on the short run Phillips curve. And again, what this is showing is this temporary increase in output and the ability to produce beyond what our normal capacity is. Therefore, point B represents a point of unexpected inflation. In other words, people were not expecting this to occur in the market. Therefore, prices and wages are most likely sticky at point A. And what allows our economy to overproduce is the fact that those wages and prices are stuck at point A and are not immediately flexible upward. Again, what this does is it allows the economy to produce more than it could previous to this point. Now, we've talked about this before, but what we have to do now is we have to look at how this economy can correct. Now, certainly, policymakers could step in and take active stabilization measures to correct the short run disequilibrium. And they could try to reverse this demand pull inflation in the economy by adopting contractionary monetary and contractionary fiscal policy. But let's just assume that the economy is correcting on its own. So what's going to happen and what's going to bring us back to long run equilibrium? Long run equilibrium is going to be satisfied as a shift to the left of the short run aggregate supply curve as people's expectations of inflation change. Therefore, people will want more money in other words, their wage demands will increase as a result of this unexpected inflation. In other words, inflation strips the value of money. Therefore, people will need more money and will demand more money in the labor market. Okay, so this is going to happen over time and will happen eventually. But what will happen is we'll see a, a movement from A to B along the short run aggregate supply curve as in, we see an increase in aggregate demand. So this is demand pull inflation. Over time, people's expectations of inflation will change and this will cause the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left bringing us to point C back to long run equilibrium. Uh, additionally, you also see the input costs rise which will no longer allow businesses to produce where they could produce at point B and again we will see an overall price level increase at point C. However, we will be back at long run equilibrium. Now, how do we reflect that on this Phillips curve model? So the question is, where do I need to be on this Phillips curve model? Now, what I need to show is I need to show prices increasing, but I need to show us back at long run equilibrium. So how do I get there? Well, the only way to get there is to show this mirror reflection of the short run Phillips curve and the short run aggregate supply curve. As the short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left, the short run Phillips curve shifts in the opposite direction. So the short run Phillips curve will shift to the right and bring us back to point C. Now, now on both of these graphs, point C represents a point where people's expectations of inflation have adjusted upward. In other words, they have come to realize there would be this inflation in the market, and therefore they have adjusted their wage demands and have come to expect this inflation in the market. So here we are at a point of long run equilibrium. However, we have higher price levels and greater inflation. But the unemployment rate remains at the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, scenario two, I already have a set up in equilibrium here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to show a recession. So what causes a recession? A recession is generally due to a lack of aggregate demand. 
Therefore, we need to show a shift to the left of the AD curve and bringing down the price level and bringing down output levels in the United States. And we know, again, inverse relationship between output and unemployment that is going to bring the unemployment rate up. Okay, so again, I need to reflect that on my aggregate supply and demand model, but I also need to reflect that on my Phillips curve model. So how do I show it? Well, again, I need to show lower prices and higher unemployment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just slide along this curve to the right, bringing me to a point where we have a lower price level, but higher unemployment. So from A to B, as a lack of aggregate demand occurs on this model, we show a movement along the short run Phillips curve on this model. Now again, two things can happen to bring us out of this recession. Policymakers can step in and take action to adjust the economy from disequilibrium back to long run or this economy can just self-correct. So we're gonna assume it self-corrects. What's gonna happen eventually if this recession lags on long enough is that people will begin to accept the lower inflationary conditions and therefore they will be willing to accept lower wages as their expectation of inflation adjusts downward. Additionally, input costs, so I'm running a pizza place, uh, dough is now cheaper as wheat costs are cheaper in the global market, have come down. And so what this does is allows me to buy more dough, subsequently I can make more pizza. So I can hire more workers, I can make more pizza, and my short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right, bringing me back to long run equilibrium. Albeit at lower price levels, but back at long run equilibrium. Now how do I show that on the Phillips curve model? So I need to show lower prices and lower unemployment. So how do I do that? Well, in order to satisfy this logic, on the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model, I have to take, a, again, a lower price level while simultaneously showing a lower unemployment rate. And the only way to get there is to shift my short-run Phillips curve. So my SRPC is going to shift to the left, bringing down the price level and bringing down the unemployment rate. And again, when you look at these two graphs side by side, the short-run Phillips curve is a mirror reflection of the short-run aggregate supply curve. Therefore, if the short-run aggregate supply curve shifts in one direction, the SRPC will shift in the other direction. Okay, so here we go. Scenario three, the government adopts expansionary fiscal policy because of political pressure, and in order to do this, they cut taxes. So what they're going to do is they're going to cut taxes to give people more money to spend, and what I want to do is show how this will adjust both on the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model as well as the Phillips curve model. Okay, so if the government is giving people more money to spend, that is consumers and businesses, and then they go out and spend, that is going to shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. So the AD curve is going to shift to the right, and if we look at our SRPC, LRPC model, a shift to the right of aggregate demand will cause movement along the SRPC to the left. So what am I showing? I, again, I'm showing these higher prices and an increase in output levels as we see demand pull inflation provide the ability to produce more temporarily. So from A to B, we're seeing that increase in output temporarily. Over here on the short-run Phillips curve, long-run Phillips curve model, we see, again, that increase in prices. So I'm satisfying that from A to B, as well as a reduction in the unemployment rate as GDP increases. Now, to fix this problem of inflation, the government decides to raise taxes. And so they're going to raise taxes back to their normal rate. And what that's going to do is that's going to slow down spending, shifting the AD curve back to the left. Now, all I have to do over here is now slide back along the curve from B to A, and that brings me back to long-run equilibrium. Again, the important thing to identify with both of these graphs is how one graph impacts the other graph, or at least correlates to the other graph. If we see a shift in aggregate demand, that's going to cause movement along the SRPC. If we see a shift in the SRAS curve, we see a shift in the opposite direction of the SRPC. Scenario four, the economy is in long run equilibrium. And now there is an embargo placed on the United States by OPEC nations. This is a classic supply shock example. Now, what is going to happen here is the short-run aggregate supply curve, the SRAS, is going to shift to the left. And as the SRAS shifts to the left, this brings us to a point of higher prices, yet lower output. And what that is called is stagflation or cost-push inflation. So here we have a scenario of stagflation where prices are higher and output is down. 
And if output is down, then unemployment is up. So going over here to my Phillips curve model, I need to show that. Now we've talked about how the SRPC is a mirror reflection of the SRAS curve. So SRAS went to the left or shifted to the left. SRPC has to shift to the right. But here's the tricky thing. Where do I want my bullet point? Well, I don't want my bullet point at long run because we're not in long run. At point B, we're actually in that stagflation condition. So I have to show this on this graph here on the right. Again, I have to show prices up. However, I have to show that unemployment is also up. So what I want to do is I want to place my point B to the right of long run, indicating that we have the stagflation condition. So prices are up, but unemployment is also up. Scenario 4 represents stagflation or cost push inflation. Now, in this case, or this scenario, in order to get back to long run, the government increases spending. So as the government increases spending, that G component of aggregate demand increases. And so AD is going to shift to the right, bringing us back to long run at point C. Now, what the federal government just did here is they got us back to long run. However, they created some inflation. And so on this graph over here, we go from A to B, and then we slide along the curve back to C. At this point, maybe you've caught the logic. The AD curve causes movement along the curve, and the SRAS causes shifts. So as AD shifts to the right, we see this sliding along the curve from B to C. Now, what is actually being shown here? Well, again, AD shifts right, bringing prices up and output back to its normal level. So we were at point B. I need to show prices up and output back to its normal level or unemployment back to the natural rate. So again, this A to B and then B to C is a reflection of the conditions in the economy, the disequilibrium, and then the government impacting the economy and bringing it back to long run, however, with higher price level. So thanks for viewing, and as always, when in doubt, graph it out.